Okay, welcome back. So we were talking about the P-selectin over here. And so what happens is that the selectin is sitting in the Webel-Plaid body. The, these guys, histamine, thrombin, they cause the work on the endothelial cell, the selectin comes out on the outer side. So now, important thing is that selectins are used for rolling of the neutrophil. So neutrophil got marginated because of the stasis of the blood and the RBCs pushing it to the uh, side. Now it is rolling on the endothelial cells. So when it is rolling, neutrophil itself, I'm going to take this one out. So neutrophil itself has a selectin molecule on it as well. Remember CD62L, right, or L-selectin? That L-selectin is actually called Lewis Sialyl, actually Sialyl Lewis X modified X modified uh, glycoprotein, glycoprotein. It has, it's a glycoprotein, so that means it has a protein which, which has a component of glucose attached to it. Remember glycoprotein and proteoglycan, the difference between them is whatever comes later in the name is majority or is the major part of that molecules and whatever comes earlier is the smaller part. So glycoprotein, proteins are more and glyco, a small sugar is attached. Proteoglycan, more carbohydrates and a small protein is attached. So in this particular case, the protein is a larger component and there is one oligo sugar attached with this. So I, I look at it as neutrophil carries a candy with it. He uses that candy to work with the endothelial cell to say, I'm going to give you a candy if you help me slow down and stop. So it's like that fighter jet pilot offers a candy to the people who are working on the runway to slow the, slow the, the plane down. So this is selectin, L-selectin. Again, this will be called CD62L as well. So the same thing. Now the L-selectin interacts with the P-selectin and what happens is, so let's say here is the neutrophil and here is the P-selectin. What happens is that this causes it to slow down. It's, it does not hurt it. This is not a bond which is not going to break. So it just holds it, pulls it and then leaves it. So the end result is just like that fighter plane which is coming to the runway and it is going to slow down. The end result here is that this neutrophil when it is rolling here as part of rolling it's going to slow down as well. And what do we want? End result what we want is we want this thing to stop. So this is a fighter plane, we want it to stop. So we are reducing the speed by engaging the selectin. Selecting on the endothelial surface, selecting on the neutrophil. Good? Now, the, so this is about the P-selectin. On the other hand, when interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor, which is coming from macrophage, remember macrophage gave interleukin-1, 6, 8, tumor necrosis factor and many other things. When the interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor 1, they act on the endothelial cell, endothelial cell in that influence, they display E-selectin on their surface, E-selectin on their surface. So I would just make that E-selectin over here as well. So there is now E-selectin and there is P-selectin which is showing on the surface of endothelial cell. So endothelial cell has started popping up their arms and they want to grab the neutrophils. But this grabbing of the neutrophil is not a covalent bond. Rather they try to grab it, slow it down and let it go. Grab it again, slow it down and let it go. And so at the end of the day, the neutrophil would start rolling here while stopping, while slowing down. Good? Now, as the neutrophil is slowing down, the neutrophil has one more thing in it which is called integrin. And so do the endothelial cells. When the integrin, so pay attention, when the integrins are present on the endothelial cells, normally they are called cell adhesion molecules. And really they are not just for the endothelial cell. Many other cells which are connected to each other have cell adhesion molecules. So the integrins present on the endothelial cells are called cell adhesion molecules. 
integrins present in the neutrophils are not called cell adhesion molecule. At the end of the day, they are also cell adhesion molecules. Anyways, these are integrins. So, the difference between a selectin and an, and an integrin, selectin slows down the neutrophil. Integrin will stop the neutrophil. It is different. So, now look at this, do not forget this. Integrin on the neutrophil is in a low affinity state. So, let us say if I am going to handshake with someone and handshake we need both hands to be open to do a handshake, instead I keep my hand closed. So, I would say my hand is in a low affinity state for handshake or can I say that I have low avidity, avidity A V I a V I D I T Y avidity. So, the avidity of the integrin is low. Why? Because the other guy's hand is there, but we are not doing a handshake. So, the endothelial cells have their hands open, their integrins are open, their cell adhesion molecules are open, they, they want to have a handshake. But leukocyte knows if I connected with these integrins, I am going to stop. These are stronger bonds, they are going to stop the neutrophil. He want to know before he stops that is he really needed there. How does he know that? So, remember these chemical substances which are coming in? These chemical substances which are coming in, for example, IL-1 and tumor necrosis factor, when they touch the neutrophil, that causes the neutrophils integrin to open up. Now, it has gone in the higher affinity state. Now, it is in a state that it is going to bind and it is going to bind with the endothelial cells. right? So, neutrophil has to know that it is really needed. So, how does it know? The substance is coming from here. These are messages, these are phone calls saying, we are in stress under here. We are being attacked by a pathogen. We need you. So, if he did not hear that in normal situations, the neutrophil is not going to go into that tissue. So, it is going to make sure that before it goes into the tissue, tissue really needs it. And how does it make sure that tissue really needs it? It is going to be waiting for interleukins and tumor necrosis factor. When these chemical substances act on the surface of the neutrophil, which is inside the blood vessel, then the integrins would open up. A little bit about integrins. Integrins are heterodimeric proteins. So, they are hetero, that means the, the dimeric. So, two components to them. They both are different components and they are used for, for adhesion of neutrophil to the endothelium. These are used for other cellular adhesions too. Now, the integrin which are, which are on the leukocyte surface and the integrin which are on, on the endothelium surface. So, here is how they do. There is an integrin called ICAM1 or intercellular cell adhesion molecule. There is another integrin which is called VCAM1 which is vascular cell adhesion molecule. So, please take out that piece of paper which you had where you are writing little uh, uh, abbreviations. So, ICAM intercellular or intracellular cell adhesion molecule and VCAM is vascular cell adhesion molecule. These two guys connect with the integrins on the surface of the neutrophil. What are the integrins on the surface of neutrophil? So, we have on the surface of neutrophil, we have CD18 and CD11 which are these guys, CD18, CD11, two of them, one is called LFA1 and the other one is called, so we have LFA1 and we have MAC1 and we have VLA1. So, LFA1 stands for leukocyte functional antigen, the VLA1 stands for very late antigen. Now, interestingly, LFA1 and MAC1, so let us say this is LFA1 or MAC1, these 
work with ICAM and they bind with the ICAM one on endothelium. So, if I make a little neutrophil here, the neutrophil is showing let us say, let us say this is LFA1, it is going to connect with the endothelial integrin. When they connect, that causes the neutrophil to actually stop or, so this would be ICAM1, right? ICAM1, ICAM connects with LFA1 or MAC1. On the other hand, if neutrophil has shown avidity or opened up its VLA1 integrin, then it is going to connect with the VCAM1 and again the end result is still the same that it is going to stop there. So, this is the leuco, this is the neutrophilic adhesion. Actually, many other leukocytes also get the same way, they adhere to the, to the endothelium in the same way. So, now what have we established? We have gotten the neutrophil to slow down, that was selectins and now we have gotten it to be held on the surface of the endothelium, that is integrin. Now, magic, magic, very important thing. This neutrophil, which is standing here, so I'm just going to clean up this area a little bit. This neutrophil, which is standing here, that neutrophil, so endothelium, endothelium, endothelium. So the neutrophil, which is now standing here, and is stopped by way of integrins, this neutrophil now needs to go inside the tissue. So, this movement of neutrophil from here towards the inside of the tissue, this is called transmigration. This is called transmigration. This is also called diapadesis. So, the neutrophil has to now do diapadesis, but here is a problem. This is why I said, please understand, this is a venule. There is a problem. We have, we have basement membrane here, we have tissue here, vascular tissue, which needs to be crossed before the neutrophil ends up inside. How does it do that? Two, two things, very important things. One, all endothelium have a protein called CD31. Remember we talked about CD31 a few in our last lecture as well. CD31 is the one which allows the neutrophil to handshake with the macrophage and the macrophage then sees if the neutrophil is happy and healthy or not. Otherwise, it is going to phagocytose the neutrophil and kill it. Or, or remove it. So, this is the same CD31. This CD31 has a CD31 on the neutrophil surface as well. So, these CD31s would engage and that would allow the neutrophil to start moving towards the tissue. Selectins were used to slow down the neutrophil. Integrins were used to stop the neutrophil. Now, we have gotten CD31. Now, as the neutrophil start moving towards the tissue, towards the tissue using these, um, what are these things, uh, CD31s, it has to break down this tissue. For that, remember basement membranes are made up of collagen. So, neutrophil would now start pouring granules or chemical substances outside which have collagenase. So, which granule in the neutrophil has collagenase, primary granule. So, we will talk about it in a few minutes, how the granules are and what, are, what is in there. But anyways, the primary granule would throw the collagenase and that would digest the collagen and the tissue here, basement membrane and the, so the neutrophil would end up in the tissue. So, in this little lecture, what we talked about was how the margination occurred, how rolling occurred using selectins, how we reduced and finally held the neutrophil using integrins and how the neutrophil is now doing transmigration using CD31 and collagenase to break down the tissue. So, uh, within our next lecture now, within the next part of the lecture, we will continue to have the neutrophil come in here and start doing its role.